Welcome to the third part of our overview lecture on American imperialism. In the first part, we looked at the reasons why the United States decided to act in an imperialist way. In the second lecture, we looked at the territories that were gained by the United States and its empire building. And in this last part here, we're going to look at how the United States acted after the Spanish-American War under three presidents. Theodore Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, and Woodrow Wilson. These men will not gain territory like McKinley did with the Spanish-American War, but they will set up these spheres of influence in Central and South America and really establish the relationships that will drive the United States and Central and South America in the decades to come. The main reason why the United States decides to intervene in these areas is because they are looking to keep Europe out. Remember at this point, it's all about grabbing the land, gaining the resources, having that power. So the United States is gonna act in this part of the world for decades to come, but will really step in at this point in history under these presidents. As we go through these, I know that I'm skimming through. That's okay. I don't want you to panic about not knowing everything about these men and their actions. This is just an overview part. You will be looking at these in greater depth in class. So after William McKinley um, passes away, Roosevelt will take over. He was the vice president. and. Roosevelt is definitely an imperialist. He believes in exerting American influence wherever it's necessary if it will benefit the United States to the point where he will establish what's called the Roosevelt Corollary. This is like an add-on to the Monroe Doctrine that says not just Europe stay out of the Western Hemisphere but understand Latin America that will come in if it means that that will keep Europe out. And Roosevelt sees this as being in the interest of the United States, but also a necessary measure to ensure American control in that Western Hemisphere. Roosevelt will take action on a global scale in a number of ways, but perhaps most notable is the construction of the Panama Canal. For many years, European nations in the United States had been eyeballing this very narrow part of Central America to cut a canal through so that ships didn't have to go all the way down around the southern part of South America to get to the Pacific Ocean. There are several sites, but Roosevelt looks at where the French had started building a canal and in this area of Panama, that territory was actually held by the nation of Colombia. Roosevelt wants this canal because it will make the United States Navy that much more mobile, will make the United States Navy that much more powerful because they're mobile. And so he will go to Colombia, offer to basically purchase the rights to the land. Colombia will say no. They do recognize the value of this territory and what that means in the bigger power struggle if the United States controls that territory. Teddy Roosevelt, not very keen on their response, will back a small Panamanian revolution, meaning there's a small group of people in Panama who want to be independent from Colombia. He will send the might of the U.S. military behind them and basically point a gun at Colombia and say, well, what about now? Can Panama be independent now? And so Colombia didn't really have a choice in the matter. Panama will become independent and three days after will approve the United States uh, treaty in order to build the canal. The canal will take 10 years to construct. It is a heartbreaking undertaking that will cost any number of lives between disease and accidents and I really recommend if you have a chance YouTube construction of the Panama Canal it is an incredible incredible 
journey as to how they were able to build through a continent in order to increase the ability for ships to move around the globe. Following Roosevelt's two terms, he does step down just like all presidents before him. His uh, successor will be William Howard Taft. Taft is um, not such a military man like Roosevelt. Roosevelt being a war hero from the Spanish-American War, Taft decides that he will use what's called dollar diplomacy. And the idea with this is that the United States is going to basically push all this money into countries, into business investments, in establishing American businesses there. And because there's going to be such an influx of business there and such an influx in their economy, that the threat of upsetting the United States and removing that business, whether it's trade, whether it's you know, corporations that are there, that because there's so much entanglement with the economy that the United States will be able to influence what those nations are doing uh, politically and militarily. In these kind of dollar diplomacy interventions and the interventions that are to come, we're going to see the United States start to put into power leaders, oftentimes dictators, who are not always welcomed by the people, but are willing to adhere to these policies. And I mention this now because it's going to play a role in what's coming down the line um, as we start to look at American history. Following Taft, Woodrow Wilson will become president. We tend to associate Wilson most notably with World War I, the League of Nations, but before that happens, uh, Wilson will face an issue um, with Central America that involves Mexico. Wilson believed in what he would call um, moral diplomacy, that the United States knows best and we will pass that knowledge uh, by handshake or by force um, into other nations and tell them how to be better. So it's kind of this white man's burden redux, right? And what happens in Mexico is there's a series of overthrows of leadership and Wilson wants certain people in charge. And on top of that, we have lots of American companies that have invested in Mexico's natural resources, especially their oil and their mines. And so in order to protect the moral interests and the economic interests, Wilson is going to send the Navy into Veracruz. And um, he will also send troops to the Mexican border in order to put down the rebellion of Pancha Villa, which you will be looking at at greater depth in class. So again, don't panic that you don't know all of these things. This will start to boil a little bit, but once we have the beginnings of World War I, Wilson will look at what's going on globally, where the United States stands globally, and he will reprioritize um, where he wants to focus, and he will basically let the Mexico issue eh, die away. Um, he will decide instead to focus on what is going on in Europe, um, although it will be um, several years until the United States enters into World War I, but Wilson will decide that although he wants to make Central America better, as we can see from the cartoon here, Wilson schooling the children, Mexico, Nicaragua, and so on, um, he will decide to refocus elsewhere. Again, this will not be the end of what we see for U.S. intervention in Central and Latin America, as this map shows us any numerous um, interventions, whether it's militarily, economically, notice financial supervision, right, purchasing territory, uh, exporting, 
building naval bases, that sort of thing, setting up countries. So understand that when we talk about American imperialism, there's two aspects to that. There's the actual territorial acquisition, which we looked at in the second lecture, holding that territory, controlling the actions within it, pulling all the strings. Then we look at these spheres of influence, where we're not actually in power, but usually we have a means, militarily or economically, of exerting enough influence to pressure these nations and the leadership of those nations into doing what the United States government wants at the time. Hopefully these three lectures have provided you with an overview of what's coming, some place to reference back with your notes, and do not forget that you are responsible for bringing those notes to class with you this week, and that you have an online quiz that you need to complete before the end of this week and that can be found by going up to the top of the page to the assessment tabs. That's it for this lecture. If you have any questions feel free to email. Bye guys.